Yes, sir. What is going on, y'all? Happy Friday, February 14th, 2020, and welcome to episode number 105 on the Coach Cool Podcast. It is amazing to be with you guys today for another Friday discussion, and we have a fantastic guest joining us for that conversation in Mr. Riley Buller. And me and Riley go way back, back to our Michigan State days, playing ball together. And he has had a fantastic career thus far, spent a few years in the NFL, two years in Tampa Bay, playing for the Bucks down there, had a short stint with the Tennessee Titans earlier this fall. And due to some injuries and some other things that he had going on, he decided to move on from the game of football and hop into the world of real estate where he is currently crushing it. He's been in that game for a couple of years now. He's going to talk about that. He's going to talk about his football experiences. He's going to talk about his transition from football to the quote unquote real world and offer up a lot of advice in terms of how to go about approaching life in general and breaking into maybe a job you're looking to get into or whatnot. Um, But a fantastic conversation. Can't wait for you guys to hear it. A ton of value coming your way. And it was fantastic to reconnect with him as well. So without further ado, again, episode number 105 on the Coach Cool Podcast Friday discussion with my brother, Mr. Riley Buller. Let's get it. All right, y'all, it is time to kick this conversation off. And we have a fantastic guest on the line with us today. Really excited for you guys to hear from this guy. I've been rocking with him for quite some time now, dating back to our days at Michigan State together. Then obviously our professional lives have been distant from one another, but we keep up and we push each other and uh, we make sure we're still rocking no matter what we got going on in our lives. And I think once you hear what he has going on in his right now and kind of his story and his background and just kind of the ideologies of how he goes about his business, there's going to be a lot of value that is going to come your way because of this conversation today. So um, without further ado, it is my pleasure. It's my honor and uh, my privilege to welcome my brother, Mr. Riley Bullitt, to the conversation today. RB, welcome to the Coach Cool Podcast, man. Really excited to have you on. And uh, let's get this thing popping, dog. Hey, I appreciate you having me on. Um, Seeing all the guests that you've had, I've listened to a bunch bunch of the shows, so just happy that I can come on here and be a part of it. No doubt, baby. No doubt. It's probably long overdue in terms of having you on, but I think it's great timing. And again, a lot of people are going to get some stuff out of this today. So, uh, Bola, real, real quick, let's just start here, dude. If you can give us a little background on who you are, kind of where you're from, and give us a little lineage in terms of how you got into the point that you're at today to provide some framework for this conversation, uh, that would be a fantastic place to start, dude. Yeah, no doubt. Um, so for the people listening that, that don't know who I am, um, uh, me and John were teammates at Michigan state. Uh, I'm ori- originally from Traverse city, Michigan. So Northern Michigan, I come from a big Michigan state background. Um, my grandpa played there, my two uncles, my dad, older brother, younger brother, younger sister ran track there. Um, so I bleed green through and through. Um, so that's a little bit about me. I played there from 2012 to 2016. Um, some of the best times of my life met people that I'll be friends with and for the rest of my life. And they, they truly mean a lot to me. Um, so the whole state of Michigan and Michigan state in general really mean a lot to me. And I carry those values and things that I've learned with me, um, through my NFL career and now out here in Denver. So after Michigan state, Went undrafted to Tampa Bay Buccaneers, played there for two years, had an absolute blast. Again, met met people there that I'll be friends with the rest of my life. And from there, I got released in the spring of 2019, got picked up off of waivers to the Titans yep. and was there for about five months. First preseason game, I uh, absolutely dismember my left arm (laughs) tore all the ligaments in my elbow and just I'd had some injuries up until that point and just decided that it was time to kind of move on um and that that really brings me I guess to now where I'm at here in Denver got you no that's perfect um and that's gonna provide that framework for us here so 
Um, you know, uh, the, 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 the premise behind the conversation today, RB, that I really want to hone in on is kind of the transition from your NFL and football days into what you have going on now. But to hit on the football stuff a little bit more, just a few questions. I want to start here again to kind of lay this, this groundwork. But, um, you know, first thing, I guess when you do think about the sport of football and everything that it meant to you and what it taught you, um, when, when, when it comes to ball in regards to your development as a person, uh, what can you say about that sport and how it allowed you to develop in a way that not only are you going to find success currently, but also as you kind of move forward in life, what does the game mean to you in that regard? Man, there's so many things that come to mind, but throughout my football career, I've just been able to create so many relationships with guys from different backgrounds, guys from different areas of the country, different upbringings. Yep. And just having those, it really gives you a perspective on, on things. And I've just learned so much from people. I've been just lucky enough to be surrounded by so many great leaders and not even just players, the coaches as well throughout my entire life. Mm -hmm. So I just learned so much um, from them. And I'm so grateful for that. And just the football part in general, going through being a student athlete in college, you really learn you know, simply how to work hard. And right. if you're going to be successful, it's hard work. I mean, it's waking up early, it's working out, it's going to class, it's going to practice, it's going to tutors. And I think it just gives you such an, an upper hand um, on other people in society, not to say that they're not working hard, right? Um, but being around in a team environment and going through the trials and tribulations and then being successful after those, you know, trials. Um, it's something where you just, you learn lifelong lessons yep. that I, I think about every day. Like I wake up now and it's a breeze. I mean, it's, <laughs> exactly it's obviously right. I'm working hard, but compared to, you know, putting on shoulder pads and going to practice in Tampa, Florida, uh, nice. when your job is on the line every day. I mean, that yep. was, that was real stress and being able to, you know, retire from that and now work in a field and in an industry that I love. Um, I've really been fortunate and just I've learned a lot along the way. Yeah, no, I, that, that's incredible. And you hit on two really cool points that I want to touch on real quick. The first thing you kind of said in terms of perspective, and that's one of the things that I try to hone in on um, when it comes to this podcast and this website and all these different entities that I have going on. Um, and coming from a place like Traverse City, you know, I, I'm from Plymouth, Michigan. Everyone was kind of the same. It is what it is. I know you can probably say the same about Traverse City. So, you know, when, when you come to a place like East Lansing and you're playing for a team like Michigan State where you got cats from all over the place, um, do you think that really helped you grow as a person? Because, again, not saying where we're from is wrong or bad or whatever, but just realizing that there's so much more out there. There's so many different perspectives and angles and types of people and whatnot. Do you think that stuff in the way – that you learn to interact with these different types of people, no matter where they're from or who they are, is that stuff going to benefit you moving forward? Do you feel like that was a really positive experience to learn then that is now going to have a lot of benefit moving forward? hundred percent. Yeah. Like you said, I'm from Northern Michigan, so we are pretty sheltered up there and then coming yeah. down and going to East Lansing with people from all over. Um, I remember my first summer, I was room, rooming with Jamal Lyles. Shout out Jamal. That's my guy. Yeah. But I, I truly remember rooming with Jamal, and I could not understand him. Yeah. So whenever he was trying to talk to me, I'm like, I had to say, I'm like, what would you say? I'm like, what? Because yeah. yeah. I just hadn't been, you know, exposed to a lot of that. And just being around yep. some of the greatest guys ever that come from the exact opposite upbringing that I do. And I learned from them because for them for to sure. go through – some of the things that they've gone through and be able to be successful. Um, again, it just puts things in, puts things into perspective and yep. also, you know, make me really grateful yep. um, for where, where I come from and the influences that I had growing up. I love it. I love it. And then the second thing that you kind of mentioned was challenge, right? So, you know, it, whether it's practice or games or lifts or runs, I mean, it's nonstop stuff when you're talking about ball, um, and jobs are the same way, just like you mentioned, it's not to take anything away from that, but I think whether it's the physical nature of the game of football, um, just, just how mentally locked in you have to be when it comes to that sport, whatever, 
Like, do you find yourself now just waking up early because that's just habit? I know I do. Or maybe, you know, working longer hours because you feel like you should. Or, you know, in terms of that translation, do you feel like there's some carryover when it comes to what you got going on right now in the real estate world? Yeah, there's definitely carryover. Um, like you said, you just get used to, in the football world, you know, waking up at five and being at the building until seven at night. And that's yeah. just kind of normal. So I, I kind of try to keep that, that same schedule with me now. I try to wake up at about 5.30 and send my first emails out by six. Um, and then usually I don't stop working till about seven at night. Yeah. Um, it's just a different kind of stress. Right. Um, especially when you're in the NFL and a guy like me and many others that go undrafted. I mean, you're one hamstring tweak away from being out of a job and yep. having to move and pick up all your stuff out of your apartment and move to a different city. So it's just a different stress. So now being out of that and kind of that weight being off my shoulder just kind of allows me to, to not relax a little bit, but just to be able to really enjoy yep. what I'm doing. Yep, um, no. So that's kind of the, the big takeaways from it. Yeah, I feel it. 1000%. 1000%. And you know what, let's, 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 let's kind of go there for a second. You talked about how you went undrafted. And for everybody that um, is kind of unaware of the situation, I'm, I'm going to float Riley's boat real quick. So when it comes to the NFL, right? I think everybody gets this sexy idea of what the NFL is. You get drafted, you make the team, it's all good. It's all smiles. Well, no, because the situation, the fact of the matter is this, when you leave college, there's obviously the NFL draft, there's seven rounds and you have the opportunity to get drafted. But if you're not drafted in one of those seven rounds, you can still sign on to a team as an undrafted free agent, which is what Riley did. Now, when you get to a situation like that, again, you can kind of see people say, oh, I signed with you know, the Tampa Bay Bucks or the Detroit Lions or whatever. And again, that sounds sexy, but all that is really doing is just getting your foot in the door during fall camp to have the opportunity to still make the team. So there's a 53 man roster, but in terms of people going to camp, it's damn near still a hundred people. So half of those cats are going to be gone. And the preferential treatment goes to the cats who have been around the people who got drafted, the vets, whatever. And then come the undrafted guys, let alone the rookies. And Riley was able to make that stuff happen as a rookie in Tampa Bay, which is absolutely incredible. Not many people can say that. So I guess RB, when it, when, when it comes to that stuff, when you went into that situation, being that undrafted cat in a new environment, like what, what, what kind of went into that? What was your mindset? What was kind of your approach in terms of just laying it out there, giving yourself a chance to even not even, you know, possibly make the team, but actually make the team because the odds are very much stacked against you. So how did you kind of navigate that process? Yeah, so I'll just touch on the undrafted part for a Please. second because we're coming up on combine and pro day and, yeah, and the yeah. actual draft. Yep. So going into my senior year, you know, I was feeling great, had an awesome uh, junior year in 2015. We went to the playoffs um, and all of that. Come into my senior year, I end up breaking my shoulder blade and tearing my labrum in fall camp. Mm -hmm. So – I played that whole season with that. I missed wow. a couple games, but I just wasn't really able to play to the best of my ability. And I still thought there was a chance I'd get drafted. I was hearing good things. And then I get hurt two days before the combine, pull my hamstring. Yep. So I'm like, man, this thing just keeps sacking against me. Right. Um, but anyway, I ended up having a pretty good pro day after that. And, Still thought there was a chance to get drafted maybe later round. Okay. Um, ended up going undrafted. And, yeah, there's really a misconception with the NFL and signing with a team, like you said, especially in the spring. So, in the spring and in fall camp, there's 90 people on the roster. Wow. So, you're technically signed. You're on the team. Um, but, what, again, you don't get paid as an right. NFL player. You do right. get paid a little bit, you know, throughout the spring and camp but you don't really get paid until the games start happening. That's when your paychecks come in. Right. So yeah. my thing was, and my rookie experience was a little bit different because I was on hard knocks and all that. Yeah. So it was a little bit different, but I can just vividly remember, I mean, I was calling my dad every day and he would just always say, do something every day that's going to make them not want to get rid of you. Wow. Um, so I really took that to heart and 
the way I took it to heart is, okay, well, I'm just going to show who I am. And that was through the intensity, uh, my leadership, and just trying to stick out as a undrafted rookie guy who n- nobody knew who I was. So I right. needed to stick out somehow. Right. And that was kind of the way I did it. And fortunate enough to land on the practice squad and then end up playing um, later that season. Right. No, that, that, that's a really cool perspective. And obviously it worked out on you on that stage and it, and it sounds all good, but even to dumb it down even more, I think, you know, whether it's a job interview in general, what, no matter what that looks like for people, um, I, I don't know why. And, and for me, I guess I never necessarily felt this. And I, I try to be as empathetic as possible towards people who do. But when it comes to job interviews or you're fighting for a spot or anything along those lines, I think all you really have to fall back on is being yourself. That's going to give you the best chance at that job. And if they don't hire you because they don't like you for you and who you are, well, then, yeah, of course, it's going to be disappointing in that moment. But I think long term wise, you're going to be better off because if you've got to be somebody you're not just to get a job, then once you're actually in that situation, um, it's probably not going to work out very well because you put up this front or they thought you were something you weren't. And then you get there and it's like, holy hell, you know, the, 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 I can't be who I am now because I put up this, or you know, it's just this whole thing. So how do you think you kind of came to that realization where like, you know, screw it, I'm just going to be me. I'm going to do my thing. And if it's good enough, it's good enough. If it's not, it's all good. Like, is that just confidence in yourself? Is that outside influences? Like, where do you think you kind of came to that realization? Because again, it worked out. Maybe it wouldn't though, but you know, how, how, how did you kind of come to that approach and, and, and maintain that throughout? Yeah, so kind of to touch on what you mentioned about going going to the job interview and being yourself and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I I came out here to Denver and interviewed with a few. Uh, for those who don't know, I'm a real estate broker out in Denver, Colorado. Yep. And I came out here and interviewed with, uh, had about four or five interviews. Um, but then I got to the Bartik group, the group I'm with now, and I just laid it out on the line. I mean, obviously, I was a football player my whole life, but I'd been involved in real estate the last couple of years. I love it. But I just had to be honest. I, yep. This is who I am. This is why I feel that I could be productive on this team and shake people's hands, look them in the eye, be yourself. And, I mean, at the end of the day, that's all you can do. I right. mean, and that's what I did. I went through a pretty – pretty vigorous interview process here had about four four interviews and I I really wasn't sure if they were going to offer me a job or not Um, but fortunately they did Um, and it's been awesome so I'm really enjoying it out here yeah that's perfect I love that and that that gives kind of a more of a real world application um, no doubt about it so now let's take one step back before we start talking about the real estate stuff because I know you got a lot to offer with that um but, you know, so you mentioned you played two years for Tampa Bay, incredible two years. I, you know, I, I kind of got to see that firsthand with you and you're crushing it. You're doing your thing. Unfortunately, you get released. New coaches come in. It's just nature of the business. You, you, you have a short stint with the Titans, all good. And you get hurt, whatever. So, you know, you're still in the NFL. Even though you get hurt, you probably still have an opportunity to go back and continue playing. And I think to the outside world, people think, you know, why will not you just fight and scrap and claw to do everything you can? to stay in the NFL as long as possible. Um, and I, again, I think that's kind of the outside perception of what the NFL is. But for you personally, I know the injury obviously played a part, but why, why, why did you think it was a good time to kind of shift gears and move on from the sport that you played forever and, and, and kind of take a chance on yourself and move into a new realm of life? What, what, what kind of went into that for you? I think that's a great question because a lot of people are – a lot of people that I know are kind of dealing with that in the transition yep. out of football and not really sure what to do next. And for me, it was, it was kind of a couple of things. Um, like I said, I had some real estate stuff already going on that I was involved in. Right. So I kind of had that to fall back on, fortunately. Okay. Um, but for me and what people don't see is the majority of NFL players are bouncing around from team to team. Um, staying in extended stay hotels, um, driving across the country to be on a team for four days, and then they're cut. And for me, I, I, I had a couple opportunities to come back, um, but I, I just – honestly, I just did not want to do that. Yeah. I wanted to find a home 
um, move to that city, start my career off, um, you know, as a 26 year old and be able to grow right. um, in that city, in that new environment. I didn't want to just keep bouncing around and put off the real world because eventually teams are going to stop calling. Got it. And I felt I was in a good place where I could kind of start my new career and came out here to Denver and, and really that's, that's, it is what it is. But I, I know so many people that, you know, just they really want to hang on to that football identity because that's who they've been their whole yeah. lives, and I don't blame them. Yeah. I mean, it's tough. You're you're the man your whole life, you know, captain. For sure. People get drafted high. You play a few years, and then For you're sure. just cut off. And it's like they I don't really know who I am to some people. For sure. Um, it's kind of how they look at it. So I was kind of fortunate enough to to have something to fall back on and a passion uh, to chase this real estate dream down. Got you. No, that's perfect. That's really cool too. Cause I think, and again, this is just from an outsider's perspective, but you probably still could have had an opportunity to play, but you had the self-awareness to identify when it was your time, you know, you kind of wanted to move on. You want to do that. And I think that's so powerful to have that perspective of who you are and what you want to become and knowing when to pivot and when not and take a chance on yourself. And, um, that's really dope. And, you know, I, I, this kind of came to me, this, this question kind of just formulated because this, this, this is where I struggle when I got done playing. And, you know, obviously I didn't have the career that you had and didn't play like you did and all this stuff. But when it came to moving on from football, moving on from sport and deciding what I wanted to do next, I almost had a sense of peace in terms of moving on from that process because of the fact that I knew that I kind of gave it my all. I kind of put all my chips on the table. I bet on myself. I let it rip. It didn't work out in the way that I foresaw, but the effort that I put in and the work ethic that I kind of put out there and, you know, just kind of invested all that time, whatever, it didn't work out. But you know what? That's all cool because at the end of the day, again, I could only control what I could control. And if I wasn't good enough, cool. I tried my hardest. If I wasn't the guy, all good. But I had that sense of peace because I did put that work in to get to where I wanted to go. It didn't work out, but it's all good. So, for you, do you, do you feel like that's kind of a, a maybe a little bit of a factor in terms of, okay, I put my heart into this. I put all my efforts into this. It's not going to work out. Now I can move on. Did you feel a little bit better moving on as a result of the effort that you put in while you still had the opportunity to kind of play? Does that make sense? Did, did you kind of feel like that? Yeah, no doubt. I mean, I truly feel like, you know, I put my 100% in every single day, whether that no was college or the NFL. Yep. and I mean, in the end, that's really all you can ask for, and the chips are going to fall where they may. But I think for, you know, for me and you, we're fortunate because I think we had a vision of what we wanted to do after football. Facts. And yeah. that's really where a lot of guys struggle is they really just cannot think past being a football player. They don't have any – or they think they don't have any passion for anything else, and that's where a lot of people struggle. But yeah. I will say for me, there was a bit – Right after I got done playing, <clears throat> as weird as it sounds, I've never felt like I was an entitled kind of person. But when I got done playing, I was like, I was like, shoot, you know, I was captain in the Big Ten all conference, yeah. played in the NFL. I'll just be able to go get a job. Yeah. And you kind of get humbled really quickly. No doubt. Um, not to say that that stuff's not valuable and, and can help you um, in landing jobs or in interviews or things like that. but you still got to go out no matter even if you're a star NFL player you still got to go out there and prove your worth yep um in the next chapter of your life and that's that's an important hurdle i think for people to get over as well yep facts you kind of <laughs> you, we were put on that pedestal for so long for for right or for wrong um and yeah it's kind of easy to, to succumb to that but yeah at the end of the day <laughs> the real world don't give a damn i mean you got to go out there and prove yourself mm -hmm. all over again in a different capacity and uh, once I, I, I guess the way that I see it is once you kind of get over that little hump and that little reality check, it's almost um, more empowering and almost kind of pushes you in that direction. Cause it's like, damn, I really haven't felt like this in a while where I really got to give it a go. You know, I, I kind of got to humble myself and start back at square one and, and give it a go again. And I think that's where maybe you find yourself again and you, you find these new skill sets and new perspectives. And we all need that. You need to be kind of knocked off the hill and, um, see if you can pick yourself back up because that's the only way that you grow. So I think, um, no, that's really cool. And I appreciate you sharing that because I don't think a lot of people would 
um, eliminate the ego in that and, and admit that. So that's dope. That's dope. Um, well, cool, dude. Okay, so now that, 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 let's transition a little bit. So you decide to move on from football. Dope. You've been involved in real estate for a little while, a couple of years, like you said, and you've always mentioned that stuff. You've, you've taught me a lot on it. I know you've taught all of us. Uh, you, you've always kind of been high in that stuff. So when it comes to choosing a new profession, why do you think you gravitated towards real estate? Why is this the profession for Riley Ball at this point in time? Yeah, so little background. My dad was in commercial real estate, so I had a little bit of knowledge through that and just talking with him, asking a million questions. Um, but really, it was, you know, after my rookie year in Tampa, uh, when I started, you know, learning about investing and the stock market and all that stuff, and I got a little bit involved in that, started reaching out to people, learning more with that. And then after that, just organically came the thought of, all right, well, how else can I invest? What's another, you know, lucrative what, lucrative place to park my money? Um, and just real estate just started popping up. So I started reaching out to investors that had no idea who I was. I would just call them, email them, go meet them at Starbucks, just trying to learn yeah. anything about it because I was starting from ground zero with all this it. stuff yeah I mean I was a tv and radio major in college not, not a great student to be honest yeah um so I really had to start from ground zero with all this stuff and it kind of just just again through relationship building and not being afraid to reach out not it. being um you know scared to ask questions I think a lot of people, you know, like they have that ego where they're afraid to ask questions. Yeah. And I was the exact opposite. I'm going to ask every damn question I have because I want to sure. learn. Yep. And I didn't have the background in it. So, and I knew I wanted to be involved in it. So I had to start somewhere. And that's, that's really where it started. And it's just kind of been growing and, and building since then. And it's really a relationship based business. It's a referral based business. And that's why I love it. You know, yep. I love going out and meeting people, talking on the phone. Um, that's that's really why I fell in love with it. And just I love waking up every day and grinding through that process. Yeah, no, that's perfect. And that's certainly right in your wheelhouse, you know, in terms of relationships and talking to people and not for the clout or not for just the sake of business, but really caring for people and reaching out and seeing if they're good or, you know, taking care of them and whatnot. And um, that's you. That's how you rock. And that's really cool. And I, and I also love the point of this. And I think we're living in a really cool kind of spot right now in this world where the internet's so big and we have social media and we have email and we have all these different things where, you know, if you want to get into an industry or you want to talk to a certain person or whatever, you know, it might be a DM on Instagram. It might be a message on Twitter. It might be, you know, a TikTok, a Facebook, a LinkedIn. You don't know. And if people, to me, it's just like, if you send out 300 messages to somebody you're bound to get a couple responses in terms of you know yeah i'll talk to you i'll give you a shot or you know maybe they they hit you back and say no i'm not interested well cool then i can move on and it's all good but you have to put in that work on the front end and put yourself out there and ask these questions to set yourself up or else you're never going to know because it's just like you know maybe writing handwritten letters back in the day it's the same thing now like go on linkedin Search somebody that you want to talk to, hit them up. It's that easy. And that, are they going to respond? Maybe not, but maybe you just never know, but it's a numbers game. You just hit them up and see what's up. And exactly. I think I've found success with that. And, but again, I think it's checking your ego and saying, oh, well, you know, they're not going to respond or no, I, I, I'm above that. Well, no, hit up a thousand people on LinkedIn. You're going to get a few responses, but I don't think people want to put in the work quite, quite frankly to um, one, put themselves out there, but two, actually sacrifice some time to get it done. And you might say you want to get it done, but if you're not putting in that work to do it, then, um, you know, I, I can't really be empathetic towards that. So, um, that's a great point. Um, uh, I talk about this a lot and there's, there's really no excuse in today's day and age. Um, there's so much information out there. Shoot. You can find anyone's phone number, email, something straight up, straight online up. on someone's Instagram, on LinkedIn and, and, I believe me, I get texts, DMs all the time saying they want, like, hey, Riley, I see you're in real estate from your post. I really want to get into it. Exactly. How'd you start? 
and I'd tell them exactly what I just told you. I literally just started cold calling people, trying to learn, watching a million videos on YouTube. And my first real estate deal um, back in Michigan, a uh, three unit building was started from an Instagram DM. Yep. Um, I, I, I knew this investor from, from one of my buddies, Seth Calicut mentioned um, Sam Flamont's his name now. And I DM them and I'm like, Hey, I'm trying to learn. I want to see what you're into. Kind of show me the ropes. And we met up at in Traverse city, had lunch and, now we're business partners and we own over seven units together and it's just been it's just been great but that's how this business is yep. and i tell people that's how you got to do it and a lot of the times that's where the conversation ends because people just they're not comfortable doing that yep. Yep. um but if you're not comfortable doing that in this business it's not the business for you facts Facts. And I would argue it's, it's any business, you know, whether it's guests for me on this podcast, like I've hit up people and I've had them on here just simply through DMing somebody and just asking, you know, I've also DM 200 other people and they either haven't responded or they say, no, I'm not interested. Okay, cool. But it's all good. But like, it just goes with kind of putting yourself out there and being vulnerable. And I understand that's tough, but if you want to get somewhere and you really want to make some stuff happen, um, vulnerability is certainly a part. Hard work is certainly a part sacrifice is certainly a part. And if you want to make something pop, then uh, that's what's necessary. But again, I, I love how you said there's no excuses. Like, yo, go Google somebody, go YouTube how to do something. You can find it literally at a snap of a finger. And um, if you don't want to be mindful of that and own up to that, then that's on you. It's all good. It's all good. But um, it's out there. It's Absolutely. out there. No question about it. Um, now, how about this, RB? When it, when it comes to outside of what we kind of just talked about, in terms of advice, you know, I know sometimes I feel like I'm talking like I'm 60 years old on this thing, but when it comes to advice for maybe some younger cats, not just trying to get into the game of real estate, but just kind of life in general and talking about development and challenges and whatnot, um, do, do you have any advice for people maybe in terms of work ethic or approach or mindset? in terms of just development as a person and kind of propelling yourself forward in life and developing things right now where they can kind of take to and hold on to that will help them for the rest of their lives. Cause I think, you know, you know, it's coming from somebody who has put in the NFL and put it in Michigan State, whatever people kind of look to voices like that um, for some guidance. And I know a lot of people tune into this thing that are looking for that. So when it comes from a cat like you, I think it would mean a lot if you just provide it, it doesn't have to be anything crazy, but, you know, maybe, maybe some sort of tangible advice for people listening out there of how they can propel those skills forward and put them in the best spot to succeed in life, whether it's family or work or whatever. Um, from your perspective, what, 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 what might be one of those things that has helped you along the way that you think could help other people as well? I think something that comes to my mind is this previous summer, I was training up in Traverse City and I was fortunate enough, the St. Francis High School, my where I went to school, they asked me to come speak to their team. So I had some time to think about it. And it it really boiled down to this. Like, I wish I could go tell my 17, 18-year-old self this because I definitely wasn't doing all the right things <laughs> back then. But yeah. as a younger guy, look, I know sometimes you get attention for being the guy disrupting class or doing something – you know, funny or, you know, outlandish or something, but that's really not cool. What's being cool is being the guy who shows up early, who creates a relationship with the teacher, who shakes people's hands, who listens when people talk um, and doesn't just talk at people. Those little things truly carry, carry you into the real world and help you. Just being able to listen to people, have a conversation, look them in the eye, those things, they kind of get thrown around a lot. Like, oh, yeah, just look people in the eye, do that. But yeah. believe me, that is the kind of stuff in the real world real world that really, truly matters. And it sounds simple, but not everyone does that. The majority of right. people don't do that. They don't know how to carry a conversation or ask questions about people. Um, and that's something that I really enjoy about your podcast is you really know how to listen. And in today's day and age, where so many people are just talking at, uh, you know, one another. Yeah. It's refreshing to hear people listen and ask questions and be engaging and things like that. If you can, if you can, 
you know, attain those traits as a younger person, you're going to be far beyond your peers when you, yep. you know, start getting into the real world and, and you'll really be successful. So true. So true. And I think, you know, not even when it comes to a human level, right? Just connection as people and just getting to know one another. But even when it comes to business, like to me, a lot of people are trying to sell, sell, sell. Well, to me, if you listen more, you can understand where people are coming from, their perspective, their angle, what they need, what their needs are. And if you can find those things out, then, you know, whether it's real estate or a podcast or coaching, like it becomes that much easier simply because you could communicate better and you listen better and you are purposeful in those approaches. And that doesn't take skill. That doesn't take, you know, the ability to be strong or run fat. Like you, you can just do that today. You can do that right now. Exactly like what we're doing is having a conversation and getting to know people. And if you do that more, relationships develop and relationships lead to everything else. Like that's the basis of life is relationships. So, if, you know, to kind of piggyback off of exactly what you said is you can have better relationship with those around you. That's going to lead to so much more in every single aspect of your life. And if you can just realize that, like, damn, man, like that's the game. That's the game. You can learn the other yeah, stuff later, exactly. but that's the foundation. You that's know, the basis. Who you know. Straight up, yeah. straight up. Not, you can, not, what, not what you know, it's who you know. And the only way to build that, you know, those relationships, those meaningful relationships is doing exactly what you're saying. Being a genuine up. person, um, doing all those little things. And those relationships build over time. And then that's how you, you know, create your circle of influence of, of successful people. And the more successful people you can surround yourself with, eventually you're going to get involved in those same things that those people are doing straight up straight up that's exactly right that's exactly right and that's the game man that's the game um well now i'm all juiced up all right here we go um well rb to wrap it up just a few more questions actually just two to be exact because i know you got a roll but um just real quick the floor is yours dude if you want to give people your social media you want to give them the company you're working for what locations you kind of service the floor is yours kind of let us know what you got going on and uh, you know if anybody wants to hit you up where can they find you brother yeah so i'm on instagram twitter uh facebook my facebook's private but if you you know, send a friend request. I'll probably accept so we can talk, but I'm on everything. It's just at Riley Bola. Make it simple so you can find me. I'm on LinkedIn there. Yep. Um, if you guys ever want to reach out to me about anything, whether that's real estate questions or whether that's football questions or weightlifting questions or whatever it is, I, I truly try to answer everyone that yep. reaches out to me. Um, and just, yeah, just whatever you guys want to talk about, I'm here. I love to talk to people about anything. Yep. Um, and again, back to the relationships, I'm, I'm always down to meet new people and learn about people and, and just continuing to build my database of people that I can um, work with or create a relationship with for the future. Yep. Damn right. That's perfect. And, you know, I, I'll back him on that. And I think that's why we tick kind of the same way. And we're such good friends as he, he, he's, he's exactly right. And, if y'all have any questions for him, um, please hit him up because he will get back to you. And again, it could be about quite literally whatever. Um, you know, we're kind of here to serve y'all and he's very much in that same boat. And uh, now that's fantastic, RB. Now, last question, brother. And I kind of been asking this uh, with all my guests and I want to wrap it up with this. And, and the question is this. When it comes to 60, 70, 80, 90 years down the road, however long, we're going to be blessed to be on this earth for, and you know, your, your, your time has kind of come and gone, but the influence that you've made on other people is still around. What do you want people to say about Riley Bola at that point in time, brother? Yeah, I've heard you ask a lot of people this and <laughs> you've had some amazing guests and they've had some great answers, but mine's pretty simple and it's kind of been my MO forever. Um, is I'm a guy, I love to have fun. Like that's, I'm, I'm telling you, we can meet <laughs> up for beers. We can go do whatever. That's what I, I swear I was put on earth to do. But at the same time, <laughs> you got to be able to have fun, but there's also a time where you got to work hard yep. and you got to separate those things. You can't just be fooling around.
around party and doing that all the time. You really got to be able to, you know, segment your life that way where you're, all right, I'm working 14 hours this whole week. I'm getting a lot done. But then at the end of the week, all right, I'm going to meet some friends and we're going to, you know, we're going to connect and laugh and have a great time. But it's just really those two things. And if I can continue to do those things the rest of my life, I'm going to be pretty damn happy. Yep. Yep. That's perfect. That's perfect. And I'm with you on that. And I can certainly do a better job of probably enjoying myself every once in a while. But you know what? It's all good. It is all good. We're here to work hard and influence. And uh, you are most certainly doing that, my brother. Well, Riley, I appreciate you, man. Thank you so much for your time. I know you're crazy busy and you got a lot going on, but um, love you lots, dog. You taught me a ton. You've influenced me a ton. And I just cannot wait to see what we have in store for the both of us moving forward. So I appreciate you, fam, and uh, we'll get up soon. Thanks, brother. Yeah, no doubt. Thanks for having me. I'm about to hit the gym, so yep. you know how that goes. There we go. Let's get it. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And to everybody else out there, um, thank you so much for tuning in today and your listenership and your viewership and your support of this message and this process has been incredible. And if I can ever do anything for you guys, please feel free to DM, to message, to text, to call, whatever the case may be, because we're here to influence. We're here to make each other better. And if we can do that um, each and every day, then we're going to be in a great spot. So um, with that, I'm going to leave you guys. Have a fantastic weekend. Seek some challenge as always. Seek some perspective. And we'll see you guys back here on Monday, okay? God bless you all. Coach Coob.